evening and welcome to Unity Church of Jesus Christ. We are so glad you chose to worship with us this morning. Feel free to stand up unless you're driving. Lift your hands and let's worship the name of Jesus together. Sing a little louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I wanna jump higher than before. I wanna shout a little louder than before. Sing freedom, freedom. Give us freedom. Oh,
Jesus, take, take your, your place. 
That we continue in a spirit of worship. That we continue to let our hearts be soft and malleable for you, God. That every word that comes forth is planted in fertile ground. We just bless you for it coming into fruition. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, saints, and good morning. Again, I'm glad to be with you and to deliver this morning's message. Um, before we get started, we just go ahead and say a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you. We thank you that you are in this place and that you are in control, that you still sit on the throne, and that, Lord, you are almighty God. You are the almighty God. Besides you, there is no other. We love you and we bless you. We say, Holy Spirit, have your way in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. This morning, I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. And as I even uh, mention the Holy Spirit, the Scripture also refers to the Holy Spirit as the Holy Ghost. Now, for many of us, you, when you've heard the word or the name Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, some images may have popped up in your mind. You may have thought of a dove. You may have thought of fire. You may have even thought of tongues or wind or a cloud. You may have even thought of goosebumps or chills. But these are descriptors, if you will, or manifestations of the power of the Holy Ghost but it's not who the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is a person. And that person we must become intimately involved with. I think it is important that we understand who the Holy Spirit is. He is not those things that were previously mentioned. He's not a dove. He's not the fire. He's not tongue, just tongue. He's not the wind. But he is more than that. He is a person. And I want us to take a look at 
So we read in the actual first chapter of Genesis, chapter 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The heaven and the earth. In verse 2, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. I want you to notice there that the word spirit in the second uh, verse is capitalized, and that is referring to the Holy Spirit. Now, we know that according to St. John 1 and 1, that creation itself is given to the Son. For he said that in all things, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and, and the Word was God, and, and the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The word in the, in, in, in the Bible, this word refers to Jesus Christ. Was not anything made. He is the word. But I want you to connect the fact that as we read in Genesis, when God said, let there be, it was the Spirit of God that as the Word went forth, it was the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that went forth and caused everything to come into existence. I want you to know that it was the Holy Spirit that responds to the Word. That is why when you pray, we need to pray the Word and not just bring our problems. We need to pray the Word and not just uh, come to before the Lord, but come before God and talk to Him about the problem that we're facing. For instance, if you're facing lack of some kind, well, in Philippians 4.19, the Word of God tells us, But my God shall supply all, shall supply your, all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You can come before God and tell Him all about the problem. You can come moaning and groaning and think that you're, 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 and, and think that you're, you're making a headway, but I'm telling you, thanks to God, it is not the prayer you should be praying. You should come before God with the promise that He has made unto you. When times get tough and you want to give up, Hebrews chapter 10 lets us know, let us hold fast the perfection of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promise. We need to come before the Word, before God, with the Word of the Lord in our prayer. And then watch, as we come before Him, watch the Spirit of God begin to move in our situation. If fear is trying to grip your soul, well, Deuteronomy 31, 6 tells us to be strong and of good courage. Fear not nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, He is, it is that good that, for the Lord thy God, He it is that doeth, go, does, does go before thee, He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I said, the Lord, be strong in the Lord, and be of good courage. This is what we bring before God in prayer. Now, I said I want to talk about the Holy Spirit because as we begin to dive into this, we need to understand that the Holy Spirit has always been with the Father from the very beginning.
As we read in Genesis, he was there when he created the heavens and the earth. And he has always been there, but there's been something uh, that we have created that made him so mystical that we fail to truly understand the purpose of why he is here. In Mark, the 14th chapter, and beginning with verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, you will obey my command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Jesus says, look, he says, right now, he says, I am with you. But there's coming a time that I'm going to go back to the Father. And I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. But I am going to pray the Father to send you another comforter. And he shall be with you. He shall be in you. And he shall always abide with you. Now, we've got to understand but why Jesus is telling us that. And it's because while he was here, he filled that boy. When we look at the fact of Adam, when he was in the garden, when God created man, he, 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 he breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Man had that relationship with God. And the Spirit of God was there with man, in man, in Adam. But when sin came on the scene, the Bible says that he God said to Adam, he said, of the tree in the midst of the garden, do not touch it, don't eat nothing of it, for the day that you do it, you will surely die. And we all know that Eve did it, gave the man and he ate. Adam did not, Adam lived over 900 years after that, he did not die a physical death at that moment. But when he did do it, though, he got separated from God. There was a death that occurred because the Spirit of the Holy Spirit could not dwell in the body of sinful flesh. And so now we have Jesus comes on the scene and he's restoring again back this connection with God. And so he tells us and he's showing us how to walk in the Spirit, how to commune in the Spirit, how to obey the Word of the Lord, how to obey the Word of the Father. He's showing us and showing mankind that it is possible for us to walk in this life and not be bound by sin. But he says, you can't do this on your own. You cannot do this without help. And so he says, I'm telling you, I am here showing you the way, but there's coming a time that I'm going to leave. But I will not leave you without a comforter. But I'm going to pray to Father, He's going to send someone back to you. And I want you to read, uh, listen, look at what we hear in the 16th verse, uh, 16th chapter of John. Starting at the seventh verse. But he said, But I tell you the truth. It is not for you, it is not your good, it is not your good that I am going, that I am going away. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now, drop down to the 13th verse. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth, 
He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what yet is to come. He will bring glory to me by taking what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. Jesus said here, it is good for you that I go away. I know that you want me to stay here, but for your good, I must go away because I'm fulfilling the scriptures that was actually was spoken in, in, in Joel chapter, uh, I believe it's two, where he says, God wants to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And so Jesus said, I must go away. I know you want me to stay here, but there is a better plan. There is something that I need to restore back into man that he had from when God created him in the beginning. Jesus said, I want to be able to go away because if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. We know that when Jesus was on the face of the earth, the fullness of the Godhead bodily was inside of him. So the Holy Spirit was trapped inside of Jesus. But Jesus said this, when I go away, the Father will send forth the comforter. And he shall guide you and he shall lead you. Oh, glory to God. And so it is a good thing that as we look and as I examine the fact that Jesus went to the cross, it was not just for our salvation. But he's going to the cross so that he could so that we can again be restored into the favor of God. So that, the, so that the Spirit of God that was with the Father from the very beginning, that when He said, let there be light, that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, moved upon the face of the earth, and by His Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, caused the light to form. God said, this is what I want to bring back into the life of man. But I want you to know how to God we that understand some things about the Spirit of God is that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. In Ephesians chapter number 30, verse number 4, it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed from the day of, for the day of redemption. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. How, you say, Pastor David, can we grieve the Holy Spirit? Well, we can grieve the Holy Spirit by the way we live, by the language that we use, by the way that we think. And I want you to know how, so to God, I believe deeply in my heart and in my spirit that we are about ready to enter a time where there's going to be a greater manifestation of the power of God in this, in this day and in this land and in this time and during this very time. But in order for this to occur, we've got to get right with God and we cannot grieve the Spirit of God. I believe that the Word of God tells us that the Holy Spirit can be resisted. In Acts chapter number 7, verse 51, the Word of God tells me, that He called out to me, He said, You are stiff necked people. Your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. We can push back on the Spirit of God. When He cries to lead us in the guidance. We can resist Him. But I'm telling you, we are in a time where God wants to manifest His very power through the Holy Spirit in this land, in the lives of those that He calls His own. I can remember one time I was down, we were on vacation down in, uh, uh, North, in the Carolinas, and I had my two sons, and we were out fishing. And there was a big rock eddy that man made Eddie that jutted out into the water. 
and uh, we decided it went out further than we could cast, so we'll walk out in the, on, the, on these rocks out into the water. And we were out there fishing. Me and my sons were out there fishing. And we're catching fish. I made it say I caught a mackerel and I'm pulling it in. And all of a sudden, my line went limp and brought in. I had a half of a mackerel. I said, oh, my God, there's something big out there. I'm going to try to catch it. But so we're out there. We're fishing and we're catching fish. And then all of a sudden, I hear this voice that said unto me, he said, it's time to go in. And I just threw food it away. No way, I'm not going in. I'm catching fish. And I went back to fishing, and my son's out even further than I am. And I'm fishing, I'm catching fish, I'm catching fish. And all of a sudden, the voice comes back again. I think you better head in. I said, what in the world is that? I, no, no way, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm catching fish. I'm going to stay right out here. I'm going to stay out here until I, until I catch me some more fish. And I just started fishing again, and only the third time it comes. I think you better head in. And now this time, I'm like, wait a minute now. This thing is coming to me. I, I, I think what I'm going to do, I'm not going to resist this voice. I'm going to obey this voice while I yell out to my son, Burn! I, let, let's go closer to land. He yelled back to me, Dad, I'm catching fish. I said, no, 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 let, let's go closer to land. He said, I'm catching fish. I said, no, come on, come on, come on, come on. He seriously came back kicking and screaming and not really wanting to go back because he was catching fish. And so as we started back in and uh, we got halfway there and three quarters way back and all of a sudden I turned around and I looked where we were. And I noticed the rock where my son had just been standing I couldn't see them no more. And the water began to rise up even more. And then once we got to land, I looked back and couldn't see a single rock that we were standing on. And I began to praise God and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for speaking unto me. But God, I thank you even more that I was able to obey your voice and come in. I don't know what I would say to my wife. If I'd have made it back, I'm not able to bring back my son. But what I'm saying to you, how full of faith, what I'm saying to you, child of God, is that the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us. But we've got to be in a position that we can hear, but not only hear, but we're willing to obey. If we're going to see the outpouring, if we're going to see the demonstration, if we're going to experience the fullness of God, of the Spirit of God, we've got to begin to obey the voice of the Lord. Jesus left us a comforter. He said he will be in you. But if we do not obey, if we do not uh, take heed to the Spirit of God, what good does it do us? I don't know about you, household of God, but I don't want to come to church anymore and have business as usual. I don't want to come to church anymore, sing three songs, get a little dance in the town, and go home. But I want to see where God begins to do the miraculous in the place where miracles just become second nature because that is how the Spirit of God moves. But there is something that is requested of us. The Word of God tells us, don't you know that your temple is a, that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit where He dwells? And we know that the Spirit of God, that the Holy Spirit is called a Holy Spirit because He is holy and will not dwell in a temple that is unholy. And so there is something that we got to do. And we know there is sin in our lives. We got to begin to come before God and say, Holy Spirit, remove this thing from me. And Help me to walk this walk. You see, child of God, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. 
You know, the Holy Spirit can't be lied to. You remember Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter number 5, when they all decided the fact that you know, we're going to sell all our possessions and we're going to bring it and lay it at the apostles' feet. Ananias and Sapphira, they, 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 they conspired and said we're going to keep back a portion of it. Do we know what happened to, to Ananias? When he came to, to bring forth the, 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 the money and so forth and put it at the feet, they asked him, is this all? He said, yes. Well, the fact that he had lied. And I want a child of God, how many of us have been lying through the Holy Spirit? We come in and we play church. We come in and we do things. And we know that what we're doing is not right. What I'm saying to you, saints of God, there's coming a time where we got to get this thing right. If we're going to see the demonstration that we want, we got to do this thing God's way. We got to do it according to His will. We got to fall into, into His line if we ever want to see the demonstration like we want. Household of faith. I just don't want business, uh, business as usual. I want to abide in the Spirit. I want to be led by the Spirit. And I'm telling you right now, we don't understand. We think we can come any old way before God. But I'm here to let you know, household of faith. Just as we cannot come before anyone of prominence, there is no way that we feel as though we can, we can just carte blanche, come any old way we want before God. But we ought to enter His gates with thanksgiving and to His courts with praise. If there's anything but between us, well, God, if there's any kind of sin, we need to repent and say, Father, cleanse me. We got to begin to cry out to Him. We got to say, Holy Spirit, have your way in our midst. And I believe that as we begin to allow the Spirit of God to move through us, the very demonstration that we have been reading about, we will begin to see in our midst. But it requires something of us. We cannot just think we can behave or act any old way. But you can be saying, Pastor Vernon, you don't understand. It's hard. And I'm saying to you, household of faith, man and woman of God, that is why the Holy Spirit has come back that is why Jesus sent forth the Holy Spirit back unto you. Why? Because He gives you power. But if you do not recognize the fact that He is in you, you do not recognize the fact that you belong to Him, you will continue to live beneath the promise that He has given unto you. But the Spirit of God will cause you to triumph. We got to recognize who it is that is within us. We got to understand that the Spirit of God is in us for a purpose. We think of that, uh, uh, that, that if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and the fact that I've received the Holy Spirit, you have received the Holy Spirit for a purpose. You have received the Holy Spirit for, for, for to go out and, and begin to work for God. Too often we're just satisfied with the feeling. Said somebody, well, I went to church today, and oh boy, I felt the I felt the spirit of the Lord was in that place. Woo! But 
household of God, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you, we are in the time where we're going to see. And I want you to join me as we cry out to God and not be just satisfied with some feeling, but we want to see uh, 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 and, and walk and move in the Spirit of the Lord when there's a demonstration of the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the power of God demonstrated in the earth. That is why He sent the Spirit, the Holy Spirit back. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit back so that we can walk in the power of God. So the question got to become, how do I walk in that power? How do I yield myself to that power? How do I obtain that power? Before we get to the last thing to God, I want to let you know that we got some homework to do. We got to come before God and say, Lord, is there anything is there anything that is between us that's inhibiting and stopping our communion? Lord, is it my thinking? Lord, is it the things that I speak? Is it the things that I, 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 uh, say is it only the things that I do or don't do Lord is it the way I'm living you see God has a requirement for us but he doesn't leave us hanging he made the provision So if you're if you're the one that you're sitting on the outside, and you know you're struggling, there's a difference between someone struggling and then someone just blatantly just uh, I play church. But I'm telling you, we are in the time. And I'm expecting God to do some great things by His Spirit. And the blessing of it all is this. He's going to do it through you and me. Why? Because we are His ambassadors in the earth. We have received His Spirit, and His Spirit dwells within this temple. So right now, what I want us to do is to begin to prepare ourselves for a mighty outpour and a mighty demonstration of God by His Spirit. But what we're going to do, we're going to get it right first before God. And so where you are right now, if you're not saved, I want you to say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Lord, come into my life. Father, forgive me. Accept me as your son. Accept me as your daughter. And you have hold of faith along with me if there's anything in your life that you know stands between you and God, we need to get that right. And so, Father, corporately we repent before you. And we ask that you, Lord, move in our midst 
move any obstacle, whether they have been self-inflicted or the enemy has come and, and, and brought a reproach. Father, heal us. Lord, forgive us of our sin. And draw us ever closer to you. Lord, as David said, don't ever move your spirit, Holy Spirit, from us. But renew in us the right spirit. Because, Lord, we want to be your ambassadors in the earth where you can use, where your spirit can flow through and bring healing to this nation. And that, Father, that wherever we go out, Lord, there will be signs and wonders following us. Why? Because we have yielded to the Spirit of God. And so, Father, right now, individually and corporately, we repent before you. And we ask this, God, in the coming days, in the coming moments, in the coming weeks, in the coming months, in the coming years, Father, that you continue to draw us to you. But God, set our hearts ablaze for the things of God. Let our thoughts be for the kingdom of God. And Lord, I declare in Jesus' name that you move mightily in this place. That the hearts of men and women will be turned, dear God. Well, by your Spirit, you will draw them to you. For, Father, nobody can come to Jesus except the Holy Spirit draws them. Now, if you have made that prayer, if you're one of those that made the prayer of salvation, I want you to call the church at 814-238-6489 and tell them that you gave your life to Christ. Call call a friend, call a relative, call somebody and tell them about the goodness of Jesus. And those of those of the household of faith, uh, if, 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 if you were or back then and you came back, call somebody, call your call call someone and let them know that you, hey, I, 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 I've rededicated my life to Jesus. I'm back on the right track. And I'm expecting God to do great things in my life. You see, there's a reason that you need the Holy Spirit. You can't do it on your own. You need the Holy Spirit because he's the only one that can defeat the devil and cause you to live victorious. And next week we're going to go even a little deeper and we're going to talk about the baptism and what that means and why you should be baptized in the Holy Spirit. But I have to lay the groundwork for you is that the Holy Spirit is a person that can be grieved, that can be lied to, that uh, can be resisted. But we're not about that. We're about walking in the Spirit. And we're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, thank you, God. I pray that the Word has spoken to you. I pray that God has, the Spirit of the Lord has moved upon you. I pray that you have been encouraged to even go higher in God, to go deeper into His Word, to find out the very promises of God for you. I hope that you have found something in the Word today that you say, I'm not going to pray the problem, I'm going to pray the promises of God. So tell me again, God bless you.